Hi guys, my name is Alana. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mental Hub with Alana. If you're new here, please click that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see more content like this. I post videos twice a week about mental health, fashion, and mostly book hauls as well. Um, although I am trying to expand the type of content I make just to change it up a bit. I also do singing covers every now and then um, just because I feel like having a broad range of content might be more interesting to people. Uh, but for this video, I wanted to do kind of more of a relaxed um, kind of sit down video. And I want to talk about my recent hypermanic episode. Um, so I have a schizoaffective disorder bipolar type. Originally I was diagnosed, it, it's kind of a long story, so I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but I have numerous videos on my channel. Um, I got playlists, or I've got schizoaffective playlists, and then I've also got a bipolar playlist. Um, so when I was originally diagnosed with bipolar, it was very confusing. I was diagnosed with type 1 first, then other people said it was type 2, then they said it was type 1. Basically it was just back and forwards for ages and then um, the psychiatrist I had before just said it was type 2. Um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I don't believe uh, the type 2 is that correct um, because before when I was having manic episodes um, I would get psychotic symptoms so I would hallucinate um, I would get delusions um, it would last for a really long time as well like it wasn't just a few days majority of my episodes would last for like a month normally um, but things became a bit more complicated because last year my diagnosis changed to schizoaffective bipolar type. So the, the difference was that before, previously, um, before last year, I was mostly only experiencing psychotic symptoms when I was like manic. I did have some psychotic symptoms in between episodes, um, but for the majority of it, it was kind of kept to mania um, most of the time. But as of last year, I developed quite bad psychosis, which uh, lasted kind of about a year, very consistently. And um, I did have like some bipolar episodes, but even when I wasn't having a bipolar episode, the symptoms were still there. Um, and so that's why my diagnosis was changed to schizoaffective disorder. Um, my bipolar used to be quite bad. Um, so I got diagnosed when I was 19, um, but I have been experiencing symptoms and I believe that I actually had bipolar from the age of 14 um, because I, I didn't really know too much about bipolar and I never, it just never occurred to me that that's something that I was actually experiencing. But looking back, I can tell that there were distinct episodes of hypermania. There were definitely periods of depression that would last for a really long time. Um, and I would go back and forwards between the two. But um, since being on Epilim, which is um, also called Sodium Valprate, I've been on that for like, I would say like three years at this point, I think. Um, since going on that, my bipolar has improved a lot, um, and then now I'm on a really high dose of an antipsychotic quetiapine, and that with the um, sodium valprate has majorly improved. It seems to be that as I've gotten older, when I was younger, I used to have more of the depressive episodes than like mania. Um, but now it's kind of gone the opposite where I generally will have more mania than a depressive episode. Yeah, about maybe three weeks ago, I it, I think it started with me not sleeping. So I just could not sleep. Um, and this went on for like, 
I would say like a three weeks where I just could not sleep and it was just really annoying and I was very confused because my medications normally work and I go to sleep very quickly and I feel drowsy. Um, and so I was having to, uh, yeah, I just wasn't sleeping basically. And then I think because I wasn't sleeping, I'm, I think that's what may have triggered the hypermanic episode. So I started, um, getting really irritated, like high levels of irritation, um, and just like my body felt like I don't know how to describe it it felt like I had the jitters um it, it was it was kind of like if you had drunk like I don't know like five or six cups of coffee or something like you, you know when you're just like jittery and my body literally felt like the energy in it was like almost like electricity um and it was just like this and I was getting irritable because I just had this like you're like this energy stuck in me and it was just really irritating me um and I was getting irritated because I couldn't sleep so I wasn't sleeping and the sleep got worse to the point where when I went into this episode I think I slept maybe two hours a night I was up all night like legit could not sleep um and this happens a lot like this this has happened with my episodes before but um, this was really bad. Like, I think normally I get about three hours sleep. But yeah, this was just like no sleep. I was wired, completely awake. Like, just not tired at all. And I had increased my quetiapin. Um, I took 100 milligrams or more. But then after that, that's like the max dose. So I was taking 800 milligrams. Normally I'm on about 700. I was taking... 800 milligrams. I had run out of my diazepam, so I couldn't take that. Um, I was taking Panadol to try, you know, to try to like make me drowsy. Um, I don't know. I was trying all these things and nothing was working. Um, so yeah, I wasn't sleeping and I had all this like energy and things going in my body. And I went out with some friends and I was, I just couldn't shut up. Um, and I, when I came home, I felt like, oh, like I, I think I was interrupting. Like I was kind of interrupting pe like the people I was with and I wasn't paying attention to what they were saying because in my head I was just like, it was just like racing thoughts of like, I need to say this, I need to say that, oh, this, I'm, oh, I had this idea, okay, you know, and it was just like going through my head, so I had to, like, get, it was like I had to get it all out, um, and we only stayed there for like an hour and a half, and I was like, what? You guys want to go home? Like, I wanted to stay out for like hours, like, I was ready, we went out for dinner, I was gonna, I was ready to be like, let's go bowling, because, like, there was a bowling place across the road, like, I was ready to have, like, a massive thing, um, and, like, I really dressed up as well, like, did my makeup, did my hair, which I do dress up nicely quite a lot, but, like, I really, you know, went for it, um, and, yeah, so I, I end up coming home, and then, I was like just I couldn't sleep and um yeah I was like talking really fast and I I think and then I started having increased uh like psychotic symptoms so I started um having like quite a few more hallucinations than I normally would um and I don't know if that was due to lack of sleep or if it was because of the hypermania it could have been I don't know because I also have this, because it, it is schizoaffective disorder, like I do experience psychotic symptoms regularly, but this was just increased. Um, and the thing was with this episode that made it different to a lot of my other episodes, is that my other episodes generally start with me being super high, like hyperactive, um, really euphoric, um, just like 
I am the most amazing person on the planet. Um, you know, just very like, like grandiose kind of heightened self-esteem and yeah, like it, it normally starts off like that. But then by the end it turns into like irritation. But with this one there was no euphoria. Um, there was no real like hyperactive thing to it. It was just terrible irritation. And the irritation was coming because I the way I felt my body. And because I wasn't sleeping. But it was also because like when I get manic. I One of the main things that I do. Um, which generally signals mania for me, is I don't know why, I don't know if other people have this as a symptom. For me, I clean everything. Like, I... Usually my my room looks like a bomb because I'm, I'm cleaning stuff, but then I pull out one thing, get halfway cleaning it, and then I start on another part, and then it's just like a mess. But um, basically what I was doing is I was like cleaning out all these different things in my house. Now that wouldn't really be a problem if I was doing it during the day, but the problem was that I was doing it at very inconvenient times for my family. Like my family would all come home from work, they're tired, like they wanna, I don't know, have dinner and go relax. And I was there like cleaning out this random cupboard in our kitchen that hasn't been cleaned out probably in like 10 years, I don't even know. And like throwing things out, like tr like reorganizing the whole thing. Um, then I was getting angry at my sisters because I I cleaned the bathroom and I was like, you have too many things on the on the the bathroom, like um, on the counter. I'm like, it looks unorganized. Like I was getting really angry about the fact that things weren't in the right place and like weren't organized the way I wanted it to. And I was just cleaning, like just all these things but I was doing it at times like I was in the kitchen doing this cupboard and like my mom was in there trying to like get her dinner and like people need to go in the kitchen and I was there like you know doing this and then my mom was getting upset with me because she's like I'm tired I just got home from work um I don't want to be standing here telling you which things you can throw out and which things you can't and I was like no 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 just leave me go away like I'm doing it you know I was starting to get really um annoyed because I was like you're interrupting um, what I'm trying to do, and that happens when I get hypermanic, it's like, people, if someone tries to interrupt me from the task I'm doing, I get really upset and just, like, grumpy, because I'm like, you're getting in the way, I have a system here, like, just leave me alone, you know, I'm doing this, I need you to get this done, um, and I need to do it right now, that's the thing when I'm hypermanic, it's like, you can't just leave it for the next day, it's like, you have the idea and you're like, that is what I have to do now. And if I do not do that, I cannot go and, I don't know, go to sleep or whatever. So I was doing stuff like that, um, which isn't uncommon for me. I've done this in the past. Um, and I also find with when I get hypermanic, I can become very rude. I don't know if rude's the right, right word. I don't know. I really lose my filter completely. I'm a pretty, like, black and white person, like, quite blunt in a way, um, and I have very strong opinions. I do it in a respectful way, but the problem is that when I'm hypermanic, that filter kind of goes, and so I can get myself into bad situations by saying things to people or reacting in ways that aren't really appropriate, appropriate for the social setting, um, you know, it's kind of like you, you say something that really isn't, that's not the right time to say it. Um, and the sleeping was getting worse. So because I was literally up all night, all day, like I had to find things to do because that's a long, long time to be awake, especially when you, you're awake like that for like three weeks. Um, and I was taking like every medication under the sun, nothing was working. And that's another thing that happens when I'm like manic is that my meds just stop working nothing works um and so this was happening um but the positive thing that did come out of this which doesn't always happen but this time around I was actually I didn't get like full-on manic 
like I have in the past where I wasn't like delusional or anything like that so I actually was able to get a bunch of stuff done like I I really just like I had all these ideas I got them done I got all this like work stuff done like YouTube like I was just you know going through it all um, and so it ended up being productive but the problem was obviously that um, you become less like uh, what's the right word careful about things you know like with driving with um, just doing because you're doing everything so fast you know it's easy to kind of just make a mess of everything um so yeah that happened for like three weeks and I just couldn't I couldn't sit still so I couldn't read really I tried to read um I did read a bit but I had to really force myself um and I couldn't watch tv so I don't even really know what I was doing I was just finding things to do I'm not sure um, but yeah, I just wanted to like go out and socialize a bunch and have fun, you know, but this was definitely nothing compared to what I've experienced before, which is why I didn't bother going to my GP or my psychiatrist because I was like, this is manageable. Like, obviously this not, not sleeping for ages isn't great, but I wasn't actually putting myself in, in harm's way or doing, um, the only thing I did do though was I spent a ridiculous amount of money on stuff that I should not have spent my money on. Um, and later on I was very upset about that. But apart from that, like I wasn't in any danger. I wasn't putting anyone, anyone else in danger. So I didn't really see the point of seeing my psychiatrist or anything. And I was like, well, what's she going to do anyway? Because... I'm on max amount of meds right now. Like, there's literally nothing else she could give me at this point. Um, and that's the frustrating thing about mania is that it just... the I don't know. It just It's so weird. Like, your meds just stop working. Like, they work for me when I'm not manic. But as soon as I'm manic, it's like they... It's like not... They don't do anything. Um, but, yeah. Like, this doesn't really happen to me that often. Um, I was very confused if I wasn't, like, having a hypermanic thing because I wasn't euphoric, I wasn't, um, you know, like, completely out of control and stuff like that, uh, like I have been in the past, but I think the reason why this episode was a lot, like, low-key was because I am on so many medications that, um, control my mood, so I think that's why, um, so yeah, it didn't get me into any trouble or anything like that, but I thought I would just share that anyway, um, because there are, di like, every episode you have is going to be different, so, you know, like, no episode is the same, um, and I find that, like, since I've kind of put things in place to manage these, um, episodes now, it doesn't escalate to the point where it's like I need to go into hospital um, or I'm putting myself in danger which has happened in the past so yeah that that was all I really wanted to say um, so yeah that was kind of like my hypermanic episode um, if you have bipolar maybe you can relate to this but yeah I just wanted to process because um, I wanted to share that not all hypermanic or manic episodes are going to look the same for you and that each time it could be a different level of severity it could be different kind of symptoms but for the main part those symptoms I generally do experience most times so they can be warning signs like my sleep being really off like that and me being really really productive and then the um the cleaning, those are the main things for me that signal that I'm having an episode. Um, so yeah, I hope that this maybe uh, informed you a little bit on what it's like to live with um, bipolar. And if you have bipolar, then um, maybe this will kind of help you feel less alone. 
Um, if you want to check out my other videos that I talk about bipolar and schizoaffective disorder, I have playlists so you can go check that out. But thank you for watching this video.